Hello and welcome to the Rugged Rock Hound. Today I'm here joined with my good friend Tim, rock hounding buddy right here. And we, there we go. <laughs> and we are going to be looking for a bird's eye marble. So bird's eye marble really isn't a marble. It is a sedimentary rock that is basically balls of algae or algae, depending on how you like to pronounce it, that formed million, hundreds of millions of years ago and got deposited in a sedimentary layer. So it's mostly limestone. Now there is a quarry up here and the quarry is claimed. So do not go to the quarry unless you get special permission from the owner. At the very beginning of the road, the dirt road, as you turn off from the main road, there is a sign there that if you want to try and dig at the quarry, you go call the guy and maybe schedule with him. But other than that, don't go up there. We instead are over here in this valley. Now the claim, is like two mountain ranges over that way. So it's way over that way. We might do it some other time. Maybe I'll call up the guy and see if he's interested. But for now, we're just gonna explore this area over here <clears throat> and see if we can find anything. <clears throat> so if you ever wanna know some good rock hunting places in Utah, I like to get the uh, Falcon Guide. There's also the uh, Gem Trails, which is also a great one. So I use this to go look for rocks and this is one of the places in the book. So back in the valley, there's not a whole lot on the ground, which makes sense. So we're coming over here to where there's the hillside, where it's more likely that we will find the stuff we're looking for. All right, so I came across this. It has a very spherical shape to it. it. looks like limestone. So I wonder if this is a single algal ball that may be weathered out. I'm gonna cut it when I get home and see. All right, just looking around. So the stuff seems to be everywhere. It's just that they tend to be smaller and maybe spread apart. <clears throat> so I guess the goal then is to find bigger ones that are closely clubbed together. And the layering in that rock might be layers of the algae. I don't know, it's a new spot. We're just figuring it out. Yeah, this looks like layers of algae right there. So we just need to big, find big ones of it. Okay, we're finally finding some better ones. Take a look at that. And this one right here, I like this one right here. Yeah, I like that one better than us. Yeah, I'd keep that one. And I found this one that I just kind of pulled up right there. I think I can do better though. So it looks like some of these are what we call algal mats. So instead of being circles, they got lines. <clears throat> like this is just a whole bunch of lines. <clears throat> so the lines are okay, but it's definitely the circles, circles you're wanting. And the actual balls of algae. Ow, totally fine. <laughs> wow. Tim just you know, just hurting himself like he usually does. Oh, that's a nice one. I like that one. I'll keep that one. I like that one. Maybe this one too. Yeah. I think for now I'll keep looking. All right. Yeah, we're getting a lot more rock right here. So this is definitely going to be a better area. For finding better stuff. Yeah, you can see it's a bunch of algal mats. Hey, look at the size of that one. Let's take that home, Trent. Nah, that's that's okay. Oh my God. There's a crack going right through the middle of it too. So, so it would not survive in any way. It appears that the larger ones are right here in the center. Going that way, they're getting smaller. And going off in that direction, they're getting smaller. 
So we're gonna kind of stick around in this spot for a while and then we might try and go further to see if we can get some big ones again. <clears throat> oh, that looks kind of nice right there. Yeah, that's pretty. I'll go mat right there. That's the uh, host rock though. That's really big. Won't be keeping that. Um, nice. Yeah. Keep looking around here. Maybe you've noticed my voice sounds a little airy. I just came out of a week and a half having bronchitis and I was pretty sick for a while. That's why you haven't seen any videos earlier this week and fortunately two weeks ago I had made several videos and kind of prepared them for two weeks and that's why you were able to have one last week with Chimpanogos which I actually did like two, uh, two and a half weeks ago. <clears throat> anyway, I'm just getting over it right now. I'm not sick anymore, but I got that lingering effect from just having bronchitis so long. Anyway, that's what's been going on. This is a pretty good size one I pulled out right here. Got a big one right here, but pretty big rock and I don't think good enough quality to keep. I'm gonna leave it. Right in this area, I've been finding some interesting ones some nice little spheres that I'm going to cut open. You can see that one already broken like that. But Tim found one that's got a fantastic shape to it. Tim, what does that look so, like? So there's this little one. Okay. <laughs> nah, come on. I know, that was that that's fantastic. Look at that shape. Like a turd. <laughs> All right, we've been fighting <clears throat> a lot of those spherical ones and the elongated ones. That I think are going to be a lot of fun cutting open. They'll probably all look the same inside, but it's just so neat to have them such a uniform shape. Yep, on the hill. There's the rock hounding mobile over there. Well, found some more. I'm trying to find a, a nice piece that I really like. I can take that. And then, of course, you had to find what? I found the sixth rock. See? Six. Oh my gosh, it's a perfect looking six stromatolite or algae ball basically makes a perfect six I found the that six so rock so cool. or I guess you could say it's a nine six or a nine whichever one you want to go with that is really cool <laughs> weathering has definitely taken its toll on this thing it's just crumbling I don't know if there's anything salvageable in that do that. I like the shape and pattern on that one. I think I'll keep that one. Kind of raised up in interesting shape. This stuff is literally everywhere. It just becomes a task of finding the ones that look the best <clears throat> and keeping with them. All right, we've Hunted this area pretty good. <clears throat> we got plenty of stuff. I think we're gonna go ahead and head back down now. And we are going to head to the next area. We're doing two areas today. So first is the bird's eye marble. Next place we're gonna look for calcite onyx. Onyx meaning that it has banded layers of calcite. It's not really onyx. Just like this isn't really marble. <laughs> Just the names they were given. So we're gonna go ahead and head over to the next area. See what we can find there. On the way down, I finally, finally found my cool ones. It's the letter G. Not quite a six, not like his. His actually connected. He had a perfect six. I have two letter Gs. Here we are at the second area. We are driving up the Nebel Loop. This is the road right there. And we're just off the side here. This little park spot. And you can see across the way, that's the old road that used to go up to the old mine that they used to dig it out decades ago. And we're gonna hike up and see what we can find. Thank you. 
All right, we made it here. It's abandoned cow site. You can see the banding there. Let's come out of here. See the layers in it. Bunch of it here. There may be more further up, so we'll check that too. But we'll look around here for a little bit. Looks like most of the good stuff is still in the wall. People come up, I guess, and hammer it out. A lot of the good stuff is in this section over this way. Beautiful banding. Unfortunately, I'm woefully unprepared and this is all I brought with me. I didn't know what to bring with me and I didn't want to carry too much. I'm still recovering from the bronchitis. I can feel it. <laughs> But maybe there's some things I can chip out and maybe if we'll do some serious looking around, we might find some really nice pieces loose. Well, came up the hill a little distance and this is the stuff and definitely more on the surface here. Oh, we might be able to find some nice stuff that we wanna keep. Yeah, keep looking. There. Yeah, I might keep that one. All right, what'd you find here? <laughs> little mountains. Two little peaks. That could be a really cool piece for like a little landscape. And then you got the front right here that looks like it's actually... It's part of the, yeah, that's all calcite. Yeah. And then he found this nice looking piece right here. That'll probably look really, probably look really, really nice. Well, I'm going to start busting into some of these pieces and see what they look like inside. Well, after exploring up there a ways, as the layer goes up, the quality gets less. <clears throat> and so it seems like the best quality is in this area and down toward the uh, old road. So we're gonna spend a little bit more time right in this area, but probably too, not too much longer. We're gonna head back just cause this stuff's okay, but it's not really exciting either of us. <laughs> so we'll just, grab a few of the better pieces, and then head back. Just broke open a nice one here. Some good color in it. So that area we probably won't go back to just because it was eh, not that great for us, but on the way back we decided we're gonna go ahead and just hit the river here in the canyon and just see what we can find since it's still pretty early and we kind of want to do a little bit more rock counting before we head back, so let's see what we can find. I have a little shell fossil here. Let me get a wet. There, now it's wet. Yep, just a little shell fossil. Looks like we got some more fossils in this one. Get wet. Yeah, that's a crinoid at the top. I can only make out a few things. Something though. Keep looking. Okay, we sat down for a spell and we're just sitting here and I started throwing rocks in the water and when they splashed up all of a sudden you could see everything. So we've been missing things because you just can't see it without being wet. So he's got this one he found that's got covered in shell fossils and a few crinodes. 
And then I've got this one with a bunch of crinoids through it. This is a nice one that I think will cut open. Probably look pretty cool. Tim said he found a good one. Oh, look at those. Look at those. Wow, that's beautiful the way they're exposed too. Anything else on this? Oh, a little bit right there. It's mostly right at the tip. So if we can break the uh, bottom half off, that'd be good. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> All right, we're back at the vehicle. We just finished searching the river. <clears throat> we're gonna call it good for today. So we're gonna head back and we're gonna cut some things open. Now I may include those at the end of this video or I may do that in a new, another video for Tuesday. So you'll see, either this will be the end of the video or, or we'll show you some cutting. <laughs> and if this is the end, we'll see you next time. Look nice. Oh, that stuff is pretty. Look. Oh. Wait a second. <laughs>